Hi, I'm Louisa Hamachek from the uh, Columbia River Basin Stewardship Alliance. And um, sometimes I talk to you from uh, the Upper Willamette. And this is a map of the Upper Willamette. And this is my local river map. Louisa drew this. So tell us where we are and show people where you're talking um, right about. Right where all these rivers come together is Eugene. Uh -huh. Right there is Eugene. And various rivers around here. And I live up in the mountains here. And then Cottage Grove is down here. And then goes further up and gets to uh, um, Corvallis and Albany. And then the Sandy Am comes in from over here. And then we're going up the five freeway all the way up. And then from there. But no. Yeah. Wait like a minute. We go come up here and you can see yeah, this is her other Back map. up to the whole map, if you would, so yeah. that we don't start guiding there. We're, and we go like to the middle of Oregon. This is Oregon. To the middle of Oregon is there. Um, That's about where we're at. And from there, and so from from there to there is the upper Willamette. Right. Right there. And look at the and difference right around where Portland there. is. Explain to them what this map is. Louisa, I'd like you to explain both these maps because okay. this is pretty oh. interesting. What is this top map that says Nuclear Northwest? Okay. What, I, what is this? This is a map of what most people in America refer to as the Northwest, but it kind of ends in Canada. That dotted line is Canada. There's the U.S. So here's the top of USA America. And um, here's the Northwest, Washington and Oregon were most considered the Northwest, but really it's to the Rocky Mountains. And so it's from the ocean to the Rocky Mountains. And then down here kind of ends in, uh, this is the Snake River, and it comes from Yellowstone. Oh. So when you see Yellowstone, YS is Yellowstone right there. So uh, that's the Rocky Mountains are at a slant. And the, and the Cascades are these mountains, right, 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 and they're the next bigger ones, and they're at a slant like that, and they come into the uh, uh, Olympics, and then over here is the smaller mountains, is the coast range. It protects us from the tsunami that is expected that will cover everywhere from Arcata to uh, Bellingham, right because here. Because of that fault quake, yep. that quake this, fault that's this, very active. This is the region of the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. This is the fault right here where so my pen is. Juan de Luca or something like that? No, nope, this is, it's called the Cascadia, so CSZ, the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. And the fault is here. And it will uh, shove the Pacific Ocean plate underneath the continental plate and that will make this go blip, boom. And when it goes blip, it will slosh within 15 minutes everything it just shook for five minutes up this coast. This will be bigger than anything in historic American times. Oh, A five-minute shake, like the Loma Prieta earthquake in um, Santa Cruz in 1989 was... So, but right by just Trojan. A minute. That was 30 seconds. This is going to be five minutes of a strong shake. 9.2 is expected. So, we have... Uh, uh, the, the Red Cross this. disaster assistance team has been told that um, almost all the buildings on the coast here will come down. 50% uh, of the buildings in the Willamette Valley and the bridges will come down. And then the cascades will muffle the effect. But in the last few years, they've discovered um, uh, a fault line that is 10 miles underground that goes under the cascades and reaches to this area, the Columbia Basin. The Columbia Basin is made by the Columbia River coming down from Canada, whipping around the Columbia Basin, and then curving towards the sea, hitting uh, the Cascades, making it through the Cascades in the Columbia Gorge with all the wind. And then it curves from Portland. Here's the big city of Portland. Goes up and curves to the ocean and exits into the ocean here. Here's Hanford Nuclear Bomb Works, and then in the 80s they ended the bomb works and they kept the Columbia Generating Station going there as a power generator, which now makes 3 to 4% of the electricity for the yeah. Northwest. The website we could said say 4%. The, power. 4 the Northwest and 10% yeah. for Washington. So you can change the statistics all you want. You could talk about Washington State, and you could say, oh, it makes how much percent, 8%? Or something yeah, but it doesn't. Of, of Washington. Then you could say of the Northwest. So however you want to play with the statistics, it doesn't make enough to warrant the fallout that would happen if this had a Fukushima-like effect. When, from the not earthquake. if, when. Yeah, when, no, but 
the Fukushima-like effect is if this is still running, so it should be sure, turned off safely as soon as possible because this is 100 years overdue, this Cascadia subduction earthquake. And um, it now is known that uh, that 10-mile deep thing can reach under the Cascades, and the Cascades will not muffle it, and it could reach to here. And then it would shake it and break the cooling systems, and the um, power would, uh, it would have a meltdown. And then the meltdown would create hydrogen gas in the containment building, which is already going to be broken, um, because it's been admitted by the uh, producers and engineers that it's not um, built to the earthquake level that we've now found out it can experience. They say it's now, it can go to a 6.4 now. Yeah, over there, but this is 9.2 and can reach right. over there. This right. and then as well, what Lonnie's talking about is from the city of Yakima right here over to there is like three or four fault lines that were uh, like within a mile of the surface. The other one is a big deep crack, part right. of the plate tectonics. This one is surface ones that translates the big movements. It's very and dangerous. And can be created by, this is Mount uh, St. Helens that already blew and is still gurgling out and blowing. This is Mount Rainier. Is it expected to blow? And it can clog everything with all of its ash, all the cooling, ventilating, blah, blah, blah. It, um, when Mount St. Helens blew, the ash created a mud dam in the Columbia River that was backing up to Trojan Nuclear Power Plant. And unless Navy SEALs got in there and blew it up, which people didn't hear about in the news, it would have inundated the nuclear power plant right wow. there. Wow. And then that would have had a, a meltdown. Say that again. Electric. What happened? When Mount St. Helens blew, down the Thule River came yeah. this uh, pyroclastic mud flow, and it came oh into my here, God. and that went into the Columbia right there, and uh, right there, and then that is was a few miles, uh, like five miles downriver of the wow. Trojan power plant, which was operating then. It has been shut, it has been dismantled, it's been blown up. And, but near there is now the nuclear waste that was from all the years of operating this Trojan nuclear power plant, which they're not allowed to move because there's no place in the country to move it to. So uh, that's wow. legal yet. And they keep trying to move it to Hanford, and they moved, like, the, uh, coolant, they moved the reactor core to Hanford. Hanford has, like, 13 reactor cores at it. Wow. Hanford has uh, leaking uh, humongous tanks of... Uh, plutonium goo that is also radioact it is radioactive and um, soluble, you know, stinky stuff, bad chemicals, and mixed together, which creates a three type of a pollution thing that is going to be released and is already being released and is in a plume that is getting bigger and bigger every year from these leaking stupid tanks that are from the bomb making days. But we can stop the easiest thing by turning off the Columbia Generating Station as soon as safely possible, at just like tomorrow, start the procedures for shutdown. And um, then uh, all that waste has to stay there because there's no place in the country where it can go to. But aren't they cute? They've created their own little uh, pretend power company that they pre say is uh, running it. That is a, a, a collection of uh, rural electric co cooperatives of the Northwest run it. So the government is not liable, I bet, is what they're trying to do. They are not. If you read the Price-Anderson Act, they are not liable. Right, and that is... The operators so it, are liable to a certain extent. Yeah, so really this is a left The taxpayers are going to get all the This burn. is a U.S. Department of Energy project to make bombs. Now tell me why that is. They've, uh, they've been running it and telling this Energy Northwest company what to do, which is actually really just a little part of Bonneville Power Administration. But what's that? Pretend that's a people's cooperative. That is a part of the U.S. government as well. So the whole thing that runs all the dams of the Columbia River um, was a lot of that was to make the power to make But I mean, just look at, the, look at the denial of the level uh, that they say the cancer rates. Like, they are denying oh, that... Yeah, let me show you some of that. See, I wrote down Winders because when uh, Hanford was running, they got hold of new Geiger counter things, and they wanted to do experiments. This Nazi type of scientists here were doing experiments all the time, and then they wanted to do one to see how well the new Geiger counter things work, so they installed them all around the northwest, around the Columbia Basin. And during the time where they expected the weather to be what it was, they were hoping it was going that way, I guess, the green run happened where they did, they released hot, radioactive, very volatile, changing uh, gas of iodine gas. And then they went to see how it went around and how their things measured it well. 
and the, it landed on the grass I'm near Spokane. Close. The city of Spokane is right downwind, and it's 250,000 souls, and on either side are, new, are Indian reservations. The Spokane Indian Reservation, Coeur d'Alene, over here is the Nez Perce Reservation. So it blew this way. There's downwinders with thyroid cancer, and their children, and their wives, and all that are in this area. Almost everybody of this area knows a sibling with thyroid cancer from that experiment they did. And it was only found out from after Hanford got shut down, there was a Freedom of Information Act, a bunch of information that was finally about a year or two later discovered. They referred to the Green Run, and they discovered what it was. And sure enough, in the plume of the radioactive fallout that came of this iodine gas with iodine gas, that was a fallout by itself without particles. Um, the plume of the gas uh, parallels the uh, um, thyroid cancer and the sickness and death that has followed. And thyroid cancer, luckily, you can yank out the thyroid and put pretty, in a new one. Yeah, you're pretty much. And so then you take pills. So luckily, that's my one sister that you can had deal thyroid with. cancer. She had that. She mm -hmm. had her thyroid. Removed. And from many of the radioactive um, installations around the country of um, making radioactive materials mm. or operating power plants or making stuff, mm. um, there's people with thyroid cancer. Well, I think it's really outrageous. I'm really angry about the nuclear apologists. That's my thing. Is like I'm not going to allow nuclear apologists on my website. People saying if nuclear radiation well, does not what do you cause mean cancer. By a nuclear apologist? Okay. By the people who are yeah. saying it's not that harmful. Mm -hmm. It's not that it hasn't really killed anybody, which is a big lie. There, we have a cancer epidemic. We, it mm -hmm. came with the nuclear technology that was I'd like denied. To, I, I'd like to take a parallel map, which I'll come back to, to put the Fukushima Daiichi area, because those people are told to be quiet, but we've been right. getting lots of information. This would be a similar story to, and like Kiev for Chernobyl is the same like distance. Like Kiev is about the same as, how, as Spokane how far is for Hanford. How far is Spokane? I, I can't remember. We've got to remember. Oh, uh, I forget again. We'll get it. More than 100 miles oh, well, here's now. Here it is. 150 is this distance, so um, three fingers, 100 is 100 miles. It's not the so, third finger, yeah. so it's 100 miles. Or so, okay. Um, from Hanford. And so, but I swear the winds blew, blow generally always from the west to the east, so it'll go to Washington, D.C., it'll go to Chicago. This. this is really awesome, Lou. I am super impressed. Louisa Hamachek is the artist and designer of this map. And I think it is freaking outstanding. And we would love to get this into mass production. So we need somebody who knows how to put this somewhere we, we could start making it readily available, don't you think, Louisa? Yeah, and, and we'll put it out. We'll scan it and put it as a PDF on Lonnie's website. And uh, Nuke Info Project is uh, developing a website to put all this out on. Uh, pay, pay attention to this type of thing. Um, the rivers go in the valleys. So what you see is a valley. The winds will blow like this and hit the Rockies and go down along the Snake River Valley where most of the sugar and potatoes are grown for our country. And so that's going to be fallout on all your food. Would you want this on a T-shirt? Yeah. Because I think that would make a cool T-shirt yeah. for the back of a T-shirt, don't okay. you think? But um, let's see. So I want you to think about... Give somebody a back rub just looking at the Hanford website. <laughs> yeah, pointing out all these things. So Sorry. Before we finish about this uh, concept, which Oh, is, we're into 13 minutes, Louisa. Okay. Are you okay with that? Well, let's tidy it up because okay, we don't want to make finish this it up long. now. Are we ready? Are we rolling? Yes. Okay, I'm going to finish it up. Hanford is my biggest concern, and the first thing to do at Hanford is the wind part, the fallout is to shut down. That's the danger and from a meltdown. So we need to shut that nuke. But let's look at Shut over. down what? The shut Columbia? Shut down the nuke called the Columbia Generating, Generating Station, Station at Hanford. CGS. And if you live in the Northwest, call your utility company and tell them, we don't want the nuclear power from Columbia Generating Station. It's not that helpful. It's not that much beneficial. And I want to point out another thing. Go ahead. We have a Congress in our country, but it's getting to be as if we don't have any power to have our Congress have any power 
over the Department of Energy. But the Congress must oversee the Department of Energy, and this must be shut down by our Congress. So you must hold your Congress accountable to not be chicken, to uh, design what happens for the safety of all the people, and not be pushed around by the military to told that we don't have any information, we can't tell you anything because we have nuclear materials and it's sensitive about strategic things and the terrorists. I don't care. I don't want that thing running anymore. I want it turned off. Well, Louisa, this gets into the IAEA and the NRC. They What is IAEA? The International Atomic Energy Agency. Okay. They run the entire fucking world and they're right. they're don't talk off camera. Excuse my language. Yeah. And uh no, I don't care about that, but I what I care about is um, just to get a roundup of the nuclear northwest on this video, and we'll get back to you on each of those other things separately. We're going to try to do short videos so that you can s focus, but um, be aware that there's downriver problems, like this goo coming from Hanford goes to uh, uh, these towns that, that irrigate their uh, fruit that you eat. So check out where your fruit comes from, and um, and all along the Columbia, and down to here, and then clams come from all over here, and fish, salmon and stuff. Don't eat it. Anywhere's down river of Hanford. It's already leaking. That's bad. But I want to talk to you about fallout, because it will blow generally across America. Okay, so let's stop this. We're at 1602. So I'm going to stop, and we'll start this again. I'll talk to you in a minute, you guys. Ciao. Okay, hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's Fart, and we are here with Louisa Hamachek. Hi. And she's explaining the fallout. We had a big long video going, and we're just going to make another short one. Mm -hmm. on the, how long is this going to be, five minutes? Five minutes. Okay, well, we'll I'll keep track of the time. Okay. So, um, here we have the Northwest, and this is Nuclear Northwest. My biggest concern is that Hanford, a nuclear power, the power plant still operating at Hanford Nuclear Bomb Works, it's called the Columbia Generating Station, that it should be shut down because it's in a fault line, fault zone of earthquakes, and now we found out about quite a number of new ones that make it very dangerous to operate any longer. Discussed in our last video. Yeah, and you, and if this has a an earthquake effect of breaking it and the uh, cooling system doesn't work, then the meltdown will create a uh, collection of hydrogen gas that will explode, can explode inside of the containment building and shattering it, which might already be broken. And then um, at any rate, this can be as was in Fukushima and a number of the power plants and with the waste storage areas, um, scattering fallout of radioactive particles of cement and other things and the uh, uh, highly radioactive parts of the reactor core into the air. The predominant winds blow towards Spokane, but the northwest has Rocky Mountains that hold it in, but when it hits them, it'll go south to uh, Boise right here, and uh, and here's Pendleton. If it goes south, it hit Pendleton. If it goes, uh, sometimes the winds are turning in a spiral, then it'll pick it up and go to Seattle right there. Um, the, but there's uh, Cascade Mountains that will deflect it a little bit, so it'll go to Vancouver, maybe, if it's deflected, but a big storm will yank it right into Seattle, and then it'll bring it to Eugene, Oregon, as it comes around like this. Great. But then that spiral will move across America, and it'll hit Chicago, and it'll hit Washington, D.C., and New York, yeah. and then it'll go across the Atlantic, and in 26 days to 30 days, it will have gone around the northern hemisphere and returned to here. So that's it. How do what do we do? We have two and a half minutes to tell them. Okay, what, to do what you got to do happens. is get this shut down as soon as possible by having your congressperson uh, be aware of the danger of that and that they were granted their operating license uh, incorrectly and there was not the fault lines mentioned and uh, they should look at. Um, the group of it's already been acknowledged. They even acknowledged it. Yeah, and Physicians for Social Responsibility put together many of the reports and got a geologist to analyze this, and he's an engineer, and he's from Kennewick, and he uh, says it. The uh, ma their application did not include the things, and that from the application, the engineering of this power plant will not withstand the earthquakes that are expected. And Great. So we are in danger, all the northwest, of fallout that's radioactive. And the people of Fukushima area were hard hit, but we in America got seven days after Fukushima, we got the fallout coming to Oregon. Um, so then uh, I want to point out 
this. I kneel is the next thing to worry about. There's like a couple, like four, they keep it secret. It's the Idaho National or Nuclear or Navy uh, uh, Laboratories. I kneel, it's called. And it changes its name, but it may, may basically is run by the Navy for training people in operating nuclear reactors, which they use at here, Bangor Nuclear Submarine Base. These can be sloshed in the tsunami expected from the uh, Cascadia oh my God. And Seattle's right there, so take your pick. That's it. Get Congress to shut off that nuke. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't even know about that. So Seattle is toast if, they, if those things are there when there's an if earthquake. If the wind is blowing that way at that time. But, I mean, if we have an earthquake... And they have their nuclear submarines there. See, Seattle's toast. Yeah, and and because what is this, what the is this submarines thing Mount Rainier going to do when the plates go shoving themselves into the goo? You know, it's probably going to. What do the people do? What do people do in a nuclear fallout? What do we do? Stay inside for a few days and then go out and no, get the heck out. You and stay leave? inside for a long time. For how long? Um, Two weeks? Well, it depends. You can uh, find out how fast the wind is blowing, and then you'll know how fast it'll get to you. You should know how far you are from Hanford. Um, and then you look at the weather reports right then on your computers and on your phones, and you see what direction the wind is blowing. And then you, and they'll, and then you look it up on a fancier weather report for the f speed of the wind. And then you'll get your own thing. Don't trust the government for telling you you're safe. They don't want to be held responsible. So they, it's the Department of Energy that runs it. Wow. Really. And so they will not, um, they have, own I it. believe, changed no. some of the wind reports about Hanford so that you don't think it's going to go to really? Spokane. Really? Have they does. already done that? They've already done that. Well, I've been looking for, um, like, the, the um, wind reports over the years so that we can see how many times in a year... Does, how many days in a year does the wind go from Hanford and the Columbia Basin here over the Cascades? And, and this is Wenatchee right there. Yeah. Then Snoqualmie Pass. And then it comes down into Rent, Renton and into Seattle. So when does it do that? How many times it does do that? And people who know how to Google it, go find your weather reports. If you live anywhere it's in the Columbia Basin, like here's Spokane, here's Kurt Lane, here's Spokane. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And these are all Indian reservations. Um... I don't even like to call them that, but that's what they are. And so I nations aren't they separate nations? Yeah, but there are government making the native folks be downwind yes. of their project, yes. and it's not fair to keep tormenting these right. noble people who had this as their beautiful place of fish and salmon of the old days. And look what we did with it! Like we really, we like disgustingly a nuclear. A disaster yeah. for the entire fucking planet. Seven nuclear power plants operating at Ineal. This is that how they say thank you? <laughs> yeah, I like. Thank uh, you for letting us kick you off our land. Now let us fuck it up for the entire and planet. And use you as guinea pigs to see how you take the radiation that we spew out Mother occasionally fuckers. from our radioactive. This is why I will not, Louisa. Sites. I will not tolerate nuclear apologists. On um, where this video is going to okay, post. Okay, did we need to? So, uh, we're going to end here, you guys. Put your courage feet on, because this... And get a Geiger is, counter. Yes, and make sure you uh, have containers to put water in. So And put water in them. And put water in them and change it up regularly. In an earthquake. Okay. Ciao.